Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome to another Aaron's Aquarium video and welcome to episode number five of this super simple budget reef series. Now in this series, we have been taking it step by step and we've been setting up this Fluval Evo 13.5 as a saltwater reef aquarium. In the previous videos, we have added saltwater fish to the aquarium and also saltwater corals. And this is now a fully functioning reef aquarium. But we're starting to get to the stage now where we need to get a little bit of help with this aquarium so that we don't have to do as much. So today we are going to be adding cleanup crew to this tank. Now I bet you've been scouting about YouTube, I bet you've been on Facebook and everywhere else, you know, getting as much knowledge as you can. And I bet you've heard from other people that when you're setting up a saltwater tank, you know, you need to get your cleanup crew in, get all your cleanup crew in, then get your fish in, then get your corals in and you're good to go. But for me, that doesn't make sense. Why would you add cleanup crew first? I've never understood it um, because the clues in its name, clean up crew. It's a crew that helps you clean up. But what if there's nothing to clean up? Do you know what I mean? Here's an analogy for you. You know I love my analogies. Imagine you've just bought a brand spanking new house, literally new build. Everything is spick and span, proper, fresh coats of paint on the wall, everything about it is just mwah, top notch. It is pristine. It is so clean because it's brand new. Would you then go, do you know what? I need to hire a cleaner for this, for this house. You wouldn't, would you? It's clean, it's already clean. You don't need a cleaner. So why would you put cleanup crew into a saltwater tank at the beginning when there's nothing to clean? For me, it doesn't make sense. And because obviously we don't know what we're going to need cleanup crew for, you know, like, are we going to have an algae problem or are we going to have like an algae issue where we need a bit of help with it? Do we need help with our sand bed? You know, imagine we went out and bought some peppermint shrimp to eat Aptasia, but we may never get Aptasia. Those peppermint shrimp will potentially starve to death. So choosing the cleanup crew based on, you know, the things that need cleaning up, is the best practice for me really. So at this moment in time, the tank is, you know, two months old and you know, we're starting to see things change. We're starting to see things happen. Corals in here are doing really well and things are starting to happen where I'm thinking to myself, do you know what? I need to hire some guys now. I need to get the crew in for certain things. Now I can very easily, you know, do certain things myself, but why? I may as well get somebody in to do it for me. That's the whole point of hiring help, right? So this tank needs a little bit of help for a few things. Like for example, check out that rock in the middle of the aquarium. Let me just zoom in on it. Look at that. Now that is starting to build up a bit of hair algae. Now hair algae, you know, it's this, this much of it isn't out of the control. It's not the end of the world. And it could very easily get rid of that with a toothbrush, but I don't want to. I'm going to hire myself a maid. I'm going to hire myself a cleaner to sort that out for me who will monitor and maintain that for me each and every day so I don't have to. So we know who the first member of staff we need to hire. We need to hire an algae cleaner. And then it may not look like it on this camera, but there is an ever so slight, you know, brownness to my sand. Now I pride myself on very white sand. If you watch my other videos on my aquarium called The One, I pride myself on having very white sand. Now that in my other aquarium is down to having a hell of a lot of flow, but I can't put a hell of a lot of flow in this aquarium. So I need to get somebody to help me. So that means I'm also going to hire somebody to monitor and maintain my sand bed. So I popped down to my local shop, Just Marine Aquatics, the shop that you saw in the video when I picked up the fish for this aquarium. And I've got myself a few members of staff. So first of all, what have we got? We've got two turbo snails. Now the, these guys are gonna be helping us with the algae in this aquarium. They're gonna just go through the tank and just eat it each and every day and just keep on top of it so that it doesn't get out of hand. We've also got a huge Nazaria snail. Now this guy, I don't actually know if it's actually a Nazaria snail, but it's got the same, it looks like a Nazaria snail, um, but it's got a bit more of a tiger stripe on its shell. Um, but this guy will go through our sand bed and eat any excess food, 
excess fish poo and you'll just keep our sand bed nice and clean so nothing builds up there and gets all horrible. And then we've also got a few tiny little hermit crabs. Now these again are going to pick at the rocks, they're going to be scavenging around the rocks, they're going to pull up um, some algae as well as you know bits of food and stuff like that that the fish haven't eaten and they're just going to scavenge around the tank and clear up all of the excess that we don't want lying around. And then just because you know just as a bit of a treat to be honest I've also picked up a fire shrimp or a blood shrimp. Now the reason why I've got this guy is just because I just think they look proper cool and the red and white of this shrimp will look so cool in this aquarium. Now again, it will provide a service because it will scavenge around the tank, cleaning up any excess waste and stuff like that, and just keeping the tank nice and clean. So he will do a job in the, in the tank, as well as look super awesome. Now we can't just throw them straight into the aquarium. If you remember from our previous videos, we have to acclimate them first. We need to get them used to this tank before we put them into it, but we need to get them used to it slowly. So first of all, we need to get them used to the temperature. Uh, there's ways in which, like say for example, you can put the bag into the aquarium, open the top, and then just put bits of water from this aquarium into the bag, slowly but surely over about half an hour, 40 minutes, to give the fish or cleanup crew chance to get used to the aquarium water. But what I'm going to do, because it's just too much messing with the amount I've got, I'm going to put all of the cleanup crew members into this Tupperware tub. So I'm going to tip all of this water into this Tupperware tub, and then I'm going to get a small cup, and I'm going to scoop out bits of this water and put it into the tub with all of the cleanup crew, and then slowly but surely, they will get used to the parameters in my tank. All right, so you should all know the drill by now. It's simply the case of just take some of your aquarium water in like a cup or something and just bit by bit over about 30 minutes just chuck bits of water into this um, container so that all of these little guys can get used to him. Look at him, look at him go. This, look at that, how big that snail is. He's a beast. He might actually be a little bit too big for this tank, but to be fair, he's definitely gonna keep on top of our sand. We've got a couple of little hermit crabs over there. They're already walking about. This, this guy's just stood up. That guy looks like he's feeling about. Fire shrimp, look at him. He's an absolute beauty. Look how cool he is. Look at him. Not even flinching when my finger goes near it. And then we've got the two snails over there. So they're very active, which is a good sign. You know, they're, they're eager, they're ready to go, which is awesome. So we've just got to make sure that we take our time with putting water in, you know, just little bits at a time so that they can get used to the water inside the fluval evo. And then once we've done that, we can move them into the tank. All right, so we're all good now. We can put our cleanup crew in. So what we're going to do is start off with these little hermits. I'm just going to place them on the rocks. Look at that, he's already ready to go. Just going to place them on the rocks in different sections of the tank. Oh, he's fell over already. Been drinking the dirty beer, this one. There we go. So obviously because the hermit crabs have got shells, they're a bit easier, you know, to, to handle. So I don't need a net. Um, this big, massive snail, look at the size of that. He's a big boy. He's obviously going to be our sand bed guy, so I'm going to put him down there. Uh, we've got, oh, one of the snails are already trying to clean <laughs> one of our hermit crab shells off. So we'll rescue him, put him in there, another little hermit crab. And then these snails are great because some snails, when they fall over or they tip upside down, they can't get back up, but these ones can. They can tip themselves back over again. So we'll put, again, actually I'll swap them around, put the small, smaller snail down here, and I'll put the larger snail up here. There you go. And then finally, we've got our little fire shrimp. So I'll need to get a net to put him in. And there you go. Look at that. The snail has already started his job. 
He's um, going through the sand already, pushing the sand, going through it. He's probably looking for food as we speak, but what he's doing is moving the sand, releasing any waste that may have built up into it, as well as eating it. You can see his little, his little periscope <laughs> sticking out of the, uh, of the sand just there, his little snorkel as he goes through the sand. And then just above him there, you can see one of the little crabs doing his thing, wandering around, looking super cool. Thing with cleanup crew as well is, is they actually bring sort of another level of fun and enjoyment to an aquarium because just watching them walk around, do their thing is super cool. Like, look at this little guy. Hold on, let's move the camera around. Look, he's out and about already having a feel around, looking for food, you know, awesome, super cool, very happy. The fire shrimp has made camp at the back of those zoas. You can just see his little white whiskers sticking out. So he's, he's made camp there so far, so that might be his, his, forever, his forever home, who knows. But at the moment, he's just chilling down there. Snails look like they're already at work. They've already started work. So I like cleaning this um, algae off, which is super awesome. The other snail is just over there. So guys, there you go. The Fluval Evo now has cleanup crew and the tank is basically complete. All we really need to do now is just add a few more corals and a few things to get it where we want it to be. But that will come with time. When we go to the local fish shop and things and we see something that we like, as long as it will fit inside this aquarium, we can pick it up whenever we want. So what we'll be doing from here on out, we'll be checking in on this aquarium and see how it gets on over the next few months. We'll be adding corals and things like that and I'll be doing reef updates on this aquarium just to check on it and see how it's been playing out. Now what I'm gonna do at the end of the video as well is I'm just gonna leave the camera running on the aquarium for a minute or two so you can just check out the tank without me going on and without you having to look at me. I'm gonna zoom right in on the tank and you can watch the fish swim, the corals wave and the cleanup crew wander around. So I hope you enjoy that. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It would be much appreciated. If you love these series, if you love the videos that I'm creating, consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to press that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos from the channel. Leave your comments in the comment section. I'll try my best to get back to as many as I can. But for now, guys, thank you. Enjoy the little video of the tank. <laughs>